Good morning and welcome to another edition of the Morning Devotional. Today is Friday, February 11th, 2022. This is edition number 117 of season four of the Morning Devotional. My name is Pastor William Hill, the pastor of Providence Church, a congregation of the Presbyterian Church in America. We are located in Evansville, Indiana. If you're ever in the area and um, are looking for a place to worship on the Lord's Day, um, please uh, consider yourself invited. It'd be great to have uh, you here uh, with us. Just some uh, programming notes as to uh, where I'm intending to go with the morning devotional when I conclude uh, the shorter catechism. We are now at question number 82 um, out of 107. And so I'm thinking through some various um, uh, items to uh, consider uh, for the uh, for season five uh, of the morning devotional. And I'm considering going through um, one of the uh, Pauline epistles, um, uh, one of the pastoral epistles, either first, second Timothy or Titus. I haven't yet decided uh, how I plan on approaching that, uh, but that's something that's uh, on tap uh, uh, for the near uh, future. And so um, if you would pray for me um, and, and as I pray and, and seek the Lord's wisdom as to uh, what he would have me do with these devotionals. Additionally, um, if these have benefited you in some capacity, uh, I'd appreciate it if you would share these with other people. Um, these are important matters, uh, especially um, as we consider them in our day and age in which we uh, do live. And so um, if they have benefited you in some way, please consider sharing them. Uh, these videos uh, are available on Instagram uh, as well as on my own personal website, uh, also the Providence uh, Church PCA website, as well as on Sermon Audio. Now, the, the benefit of Sermon Audio, of course, is that you can, you can watch the video, but you can also uh, just listen to the audio edition um, of it as you're moving about your day, driving to work or, or school or uh, working around the home, uh, whatever you find yourself doing, you can um, listen uh, to them, just the audio edition uh, of each devotional. Uh, if you're not in a position to watch, actually watch the video. And so that's just some programming notes and some housekeeping um, before we launch into today's devotional on Shorter Catechism, question number 82. But let's pray first, as we always do, and then we will uh, consider uh, this question and answer together. <clears throat> Our Father, as we come to you uh, this morning, we come with uh, uh, the understanding that we are dependent people. There is nothing in which we can do without your help, without your spirit. We certainly cannot understand your word if he does not instruct us. We thank you for the ways in which you have, you have used men in, in the history of the church to guide us in these very important doctrines and truths. And we would ask that they would not only be that which we would learn and understand, but we would live uh, out in our daily lives. We pray that this time would benefit your church and benefit your people. And we pray also that you'd forgive us for the ways we do sin against you in thought, word, and deed uh, each day. And so be merciful to us now, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, question number 82 uh, simply asks, is any man able perfectly to keep the commandments of God? And the answer is no mere man, since the fall, is able in this life perfectly to keep the commandments of God, but doth daily break them in thought, word, and deed. Now, it's interesting how the, uh, the Westminster Assembly uh, carefully crafted the answer to this question. If you note there, it says, no mere man. Now, this, uh, of course, is, is a, a statement. It's a comment about the, uh, about the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was no mere man. He was indeed the God-man, God in the flesh. He was God incarnate. And as such, he was impeccable. That is to say that he was unable uh, to sin. He did not have or possess a sin nature, hence the, uh, as a result of the virgin birth. And so he is no mere man. What the confession or the catechism here is speaking about is uh, directly applies to us who are uh, born in Adam, who inherited a sin nature, and as a result of that sin nature, we do sin 
uh, and fall short of God's uh, glory. And so there's numerous uh, proof texts to consider as we look at this uh, answer to the question. Uh, we live in a world in which people think that they are actually better than they are, um, that they are basic, that man is basically good. But the scriptures speak uh, very plainly uh, to that subject, that man is not basically good, that man is a wretch, we are but worms, we are unprofitable servants on our best day, we are sinners and we fall short of God's glory. Ecclesiastes 7.20, surely there is not a righteous man on earth who does good and never sins. And so perhaps you're one of those people who think, well, I, I haven't done anything too terribly awful. I haven't done anything uh, warranting prison. I haven't murdered my neighbor. I haven't uh, stolen from the store, whatever the case may be. The fact remains is that you, you, my friend, are a sinner and you are in desperate need of God's mercy and his kindness, which he offers to us in the Lord Jesus Christ. We've just considered a discussion of the Tenth, uh, Ten Commandments. We've gone through great, we've uh, spent a consider, considerable amount of time going through each of the commands, <clears throat> excuse me, in great detail. And all of them point to the reality that we are but sinners, and there is none that does not sin save the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. And if you say that you do not sin, um, then you make God out to be a liar. Uh, in 1 John chapter 1, and verses 8 through 10, we read there, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we say we have not sinned, we make him, that is God, a liar, and his word is not in us. Now, there are some within Christendom who believe in what is known as uh, sinless perfection, that that is a possibility in this life for the Christian to attain in some capacity through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, the Christian will eventually reach that sinless perfection, that sinless state of perfection. That is a heresy of the church. It, is, uh, been, uh, it has been uh, advanced by many and uh, within various corners of Christendom throughout church history. But we understand that the scriptures teach that we all sin. We sin daily, actually, in thought, word, and deed. And that not until we are glorified will we reach that place where we will not sin and we will not be able even uh, to sin. We are in the state of the redeemed as, the st as those who are redeemed of Christ. We are in the state of being able to sin and being able to not sin. Uh, as opposed to the state previous to our regeneration being in the state of sin and, and all we did was sin. And so... Um, it is not true, nor is it right, to say that man can reach sinless perfection. This catechism question and answer highlights that for us because it says very clearly that since the fall, no mere man is able in this life perfectly to keep the, commandment, the commandments of God. Now, it, per, to keep God's commandments perfectly, we must do so uh, both uh, with our thoughts that is our thought life. It must be, uh, come under the subjection of the scriptures in every conceivable way. Now, just on that point, we're all convicted. We're all condemned, in fact. The reality is that none of us have governed our thoughts in such a way that we have not sinned against God's holy law. But not only in our thoughts, but also in our words, the things that we say, as a reflection of our thoughts and a reflection of our heart, as Jesus so clearly states in Matthew 15, but also in our actions, which flow from the heart and uh, flow from the thoughts of man. And so in all of these various ways, we, we do not perfectly keep God's law. And so when we think about just the thoughts of our own condition as fallen creatures, even as redeemed people, uh, we, we go all the way back to the early stages, the early pages of the Bible in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. Now, here we have the precursor to the flood and God's judgment over the world. But this is uh, post-fall. This is the state of man in Genesis 6 verse 5. The, law, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Uh, this is the condition that God finds us. And then in verse, uh, chapter 8 and verse 21, uh, there we read, And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. 
And so here we have the death blow against the idea that we are able to perfectly keep God's law with our thoughts. We are unable. We are completely incapable of doing that uh, unless a, a great move of the Spirit constrains us and moves us to mortify those sins in our thoughts. But even in those best efforts and best days, even as redeemed people, we still fall short of God's glory. And then, of course, we have the last two expressions that, that we sin daily uh, in thought, word, and deed. The Apostle Paul, in the beginning of his treatise on, uh, in the book of Romans and dealing with this whole question of sin, he begins in Romans chapter 3, verse 9, What then? Are we Jews? Any are we Jews any better off? No, not at all. For we have already charged that all, both Jews and, Gent and Greeks, are under sin, as it is written, None is righteous, no, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to deceive. Now this is the sin of using our words. The venom of asps is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Their feet, this is action now, their feet are swift to shed blood. In their paths are ruin and misery. In the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. And so as a result of these truths that we sin daily in thought, word, and deed, uh, it doesn't excuse nor does it change the reality that we are under God's uh, we are accountable to Him, regardless of how much we like to deny that fact, as unbelievers might seek to do, and they resist that truth and unrighteousness, and they continue to heap upon themselves further judgment uh, before God. The reality is, is that we do sin. Paul later says in the, in the very same chapter, in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, for, the, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so for us to want or desire eternal life in His presence, we must be perfect. But since that's not possible for fallen men, we need and have a great need of a Redeemer, someone who will come and rescue us from our pitiful state. The half-brother of Jesus in James chapter 3 um, even uh, highlights, and I'm not going to read the entirety of this section, but um, you are probably familiar with James 3, verses 2 through 13. But there we, he describes in great detail uh, the, the, the nature of our tongues, which is really a reflection of our heart, and how it is evil, and it pours out evil things. And, and while as redeemed people it is able to be used for good, for blessing, for praising of the triune God, we also use it at the same time, uh, hypocritically I might add, uh, to curse our brothers and sisters made in God's image. And so there's this irreconcilable war that, is, can, that goes on with, within our members, that we do fall short of God's glory. And even as Christians, we regularly need to be reminded of our need for the cross and our need for the, the, the atoning work of the Lord Jesus Christ. For that is the only solution to the problem that, that is here highlighted for us in this catechism question is that we do sin daily in thought, word, and deed. And so we look to Christ, we lean upon His Spirit for help and guidance and grace, and we seek to re repent of those sins as they come to our attention. Uh, we confess them openly before God, who is faithful and just to forgive us, but we regularly recognize and understand that we live in total dependence upon the Spirit of God that we might not sin against Him. Well, I trust these times are helpful for you and help you understand these very important truths contained within uh, God's Word. If you have any questions or comments, you can contact me. The way to do that is there before you on the screen. And so until um, the Monday edition, when we uh, consider uh, questions, um, uh, question number 83 of the Shorter Catechism, may the Lord bless you today. May you walk in His ways. May you hide His Word in your heart that you might not sin against our God. God bless.